Are you new to dungeons? <clears throat> Too lazy to play? Or just don't know how to play? Oh no. If so, then tank is the class for you. Let's be real, even tank mains will agree. Tank class might be the easiest class, but it is still one of the most important classes. The reason for this is because you take 80% of the damage your teammates take if they are within 30 blocks. Wait until your teammates decide to do a little trolling by jumping in the pit of doom or trying to kiss Necron. Anyways, let's jump into it. So how do you play tank in each floor? First of all, it is very important to know that if you want to play tank, you need to have a setup to clear in or you will finish clearing by the time the forging update comes out. This is very important, therefore make sure to use a berserker or archer setup when clearing if you can afford it. So from floor 1 to floor 5, playing tank is pretty simple. All you have to do is stand 30 blocks close to your teammates. It's that simple. If you want to be extra safe, use your ultimate ability. Now floor 6, probably the hardest floor for tank. I think you get the idea of tank. If you actually struggle tanking this floor, use bozo mask with other helpful items that I will mention later in the video. Then we have floor 7. Floor 7 is the first floor tanks actually have to play. This floor is divided into 4 stages. The first stage is max up. All you have to do is take aggro, stand right here on the belt, and let your team do the damage. In the second stage, you will start by clearing the area with your team and standing close to them to make sure they don't die. After the lightning strikes, your job is to instantly take aggro and lure storm under the green and yellow pillar to get crushed. The third stage is just terminals. Your job is to do the device puzzles, but that can change depending on the party. If you struggle to do basic puzzles, then uh, you might need to get tested. Then finally, the last stage. Easy. Take aggro in the beginning, then go to the center. If you want to help here, you can ice spray him. Then after the run is over, you drop a handle and become rich. Please! Oh, 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 oh. Maybe one day. Anyways, those are all of the floors. Now let's talk about gear. We will first start with the armor. I will mention all different armor setups that you can use and which floor you can use it in. When you just start playing dungeons, you can use any non-dungeonized armor set. Uh, however, if you want the best one for tanking, you can go for something like the old dragon armor. Once you reach catacomb level 2, you can start using the heavy armor. This setup is helpful as it gives you defense mostly as base stats and one walk speed for every 50 defense you have. If you have little money, you can also replace the heavy helmet with a zombie heart as it doubles your mending and vitality. I would only use this up to floor 1 or 2 depending on your skybreak level, skills and etc. Once you reach catacomb level 15, you can upgrade to the 3-4 super heavy armor with crystallized heart or revived heart. The super heavy is the upgraded version of the heavy armor Crystallized Heart is the upgraded version of the Zombie Heart, and Revived Heart is the upgraded version of the Crystallized Heart. So basically, it's just better stats. Note though that you have less HP, so it can be annoying against mobs that do true damage. Also keep in mind that the Crystallized Heart has Zombie Slayer 3 and Catacomb 8 requirement, and the Revived Heart has a Zombie Slayer 6 and Catacomb 15 requirement. If you meet those, you can upgrade the helmet a lot earlier. This armor can be used up to floor 5. Another armor that has a Catacomb 15 requirement is the Old Dragon Armor Dungeonized. This armor is only viable when it is dungeonized, and what makes it usable is the full set bonus that increases your armor in chance. Overall, this stat can be used in mid-game and quite cheap to 5-star since it uses Dragon Essence. You can either use this or the Legendary Super Heavy. All is better, but I would probably stick with the Super Heavy because you will need to use the full set so you won't be able to switch helmets for example. Plus you won't be using the old armor for long anyways. Speaking of, you can upgrade the helmet to Mender Fedora once you reach Catacomb level 16 if you're sticking with the super heavy. The Mending Fedora gives you a lot of mending and vitality which is very helpful for surviving. Moving on, the next armor is 2-4 Shadow Assassin armor with Mender Fedora and super heavy chestplate. The Shadow Assassin armor has a floor 5 completion and just gives you better effective HP and a lot of strength and defense, so it's helpful for both tanking and doing damage. The reason why I didn't mention the Shadow Assassin chestplate is because it's just really expensive and you will only be using the Shadow Assassin armor pieces until you get floor 6 completion to use the Necromancer Lord armor. A lot of people just skip Shadow Assassin for tank, but I just wanted to mention it anyways. And of course, the next armor is the 3-4 Necromancer armor with Mender Fedora. The Necromancer armor requires floor 6 completion and is very good for tanking because it has really good effective HP. If you're struggling with affording the chestplate, you can replace it with the super heavy chestplate 
or a tier 12 perfect chest plate. Both are good, but tier 12 chest plate is better, but requires Catacomb 21 to use. I guess you can use the tier 11, which requires Catacomb 19, but believe it or not, it can be more expensive than just buying the tier 12 because no one sells a tier 11. Just something to know. If you don't struggle surviving and already have a super heavy chest plate, just stick with it until getting a necromancer lord chest plate, in my opinion. The next armor set is 3-4 Golder with Reaper Mask. The Golder armor requires Floor 7 completion and Reaper Mask requires Catacomb 24 and Zombie Slayer 7. This setup is by far the best for tanking as it gives you a lot of effective HP. You probably noticed that I didn't mention Mender Crown here. Well, whether Reaper Mask is better than the Mender Crown has been talked about a lot. And there are pros and cons for both of them. The Reaper Mask will of course give you more effective HP, even more with the gemstone slot, but the Mender Crown will give you better mending and vitality, which is the incoming and outgoing healing. If you're looking for something to use inside and outside dungeons, you can go for the Reaper Mask. But if you're looking for something cheaper and just better for healing in higher catacombs, then go for the Mender Crown. Overall, Reaper Mask is slightly better because if you use the Gloomlock Grimoire with it, it is basically better healing than Mender Crown because it allows you to go to full health with one tap. Plus, the Reaper Mask gives you more HP so you can tank more hits. Don't get me wrong though, the Mender Crown is still really good, so if you see that the benefits for that is better for you, then go for it. Anyways, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter because you can Spirit Mask and Bozo Mask swap to never die. I'll explain it in details in the helpful items section. The last set is 3-4 Wither Armor with Mender Crown. This is just a mention, as the Golder is clearly better. If for some reason you can't afford the Golder, you can use this temporarily. Something to know though is the Necromancer Lord Armor has the same effective HP as Wither, but Wither Armor reduces damage taken from Withers, so it's better in Floor 7. So that's it for the armor. Realistically, you could skip a lot of the gear, it just depends on your catacomb level and how much money you have to spend on floor completions to use setups. But let's move on to armor reforges and enchants. Firstly, for reforge, the best one is giant, which is from the giant tooth item. However, if you cannot afford the giant tooth, you can use reinforced or even just heavy. Now for the ultimate enchant, this is all about preference. You got either last stand or legion. The last stand is a cheaper option, and the legion is a tiny bit better. I personally think legion is better, but you could always put one piece as last stand and the rest as legion. In addition, another enchant I want to mention that might be helpful is the mana vampire, as it heals you for a percentage of mana used near you. Okay, so let's move to pets now. The first pet is turtle. Turtle pet increases your defense by a percentage of your defense and take less damage when under 33% HP. And also you get no knockback if you have the legendary one, which is useless now since tanks are immune to knockback. This pet gives you decent amount of effective HP and helpful for surviving, but it's still not the best pet. Blue Whale outshines it and on top of that, it is cheaper than the turtle. The second pet is Jellyfish. Jellyfish pet increases your base health region and heals people around you. Just overall buffs your healing. This is not mainly a tank pet because it doesn't give you anything in terms of effective HP. However, it does give you really good regen which could be helpful in some cases. But since you're a tank, you need to be as tanky as possible. Therefore, this pet isn't as viable. The third pet is Baby Yeti. Baby Yeti pet gives you strength and intelligence as base stats and has the ability to give you defense depending on your strength. This pet is only good if you're running Necron as a tank. If you didn't know, at a very high catacomb level, you can pretty much tank with 3-4 Necron, Diamond Head, and a Baby Yeti. Or some people also wear Bonzo Mask or Spirit Mask to be extra safe. The final pet is Blue Whale. The Blue Whale pet gives you a good amount of health and defense because of the ability that gives you 3 defense for every 20 health. This pet is overall the best pet for tank as I mentioned earlier. That's all I need to say to be honest. Moving on to the pet items. There are a lot of pet items that you can choose from, all comes down to preference. Here are the ones I recommend. Crochet Tiger Plushie for 35 attack speed, Spooky Cupcake for an additional 30 strength and 20 speed, and if you want that extra defense, you got the Hardened Scale or Reinforced Scale for more defense. The beauty of tank is that you don't need to use a Dwarf Turtle Shelmet pet since you are already immune to knockback. Moving on to the new category, Equipments. The equipment update was released a year ago with the Crimson Isle and it consists of 5 new types of items. Belts, bracelets, cloaks, gloves, and necklaces. However, there are only 4 equipment slots that you can access through your Skyblock menu. To keep the builds easier to understand, I will divide them into 2, for DPS and for Mage. Depends on what you use to clear. First of all, for both builds, you will need a Gauntlet of Contagion, since the ability it gives is extremely good. But for the 3 other slots, Use Molten Necklace, Molten Cloak, and Molten Belt. 
A cheaper alternative is Vanquished Magma Necklace, Vanquished Gas Cloak, and Vanquished Blaze Belt. If that's still too expensive for some reason, get the non-Vanquished ones. For the attributes, the best option is Dominance and Speed. Just make sure to upgrade them by combining it with an item with the same attribute. Now for the Mage Belt. You want the Molten Necklace, Molten Cloak, Implosion Belt, and of course Gauntlet of Contagion. For their attributes, you want Dominance and Mana Pool. However, using Dominance and Speed is fine too because once you reach Master Mode, you won't be Mage and the Mana Pool attribute won't be worth having. It will only be worth it at like Catacomb 49 or 50 when you start playing Mage. That of course doesn't include the Implosion Belt because, well, you will only use it when you play Mage. Then finally, for Reforges, put Waxed if you use Terminator and put Strengthened for everything else. Alright, let's talk about the weapons now. The weapons I will be mentioning are Aspect of the Dragon, Adaptive Blade, Flower Truth, Livid Dagger, Shadow Fury, Soul Whip, Axe of the Shredded, Giant Sword, Astraea, Scylla, Terminator, and Juju Shortbow. The first weapon is Aspect of the Dragon, which has a Combat 18 and Catacomb 17 requirements to use. It gives a decent amount of strength and damage, and has an ability to deal damage to mobs in front of you and push them away. For someone just starting dungeons, this weapon is very good. Of course, for it to be used for long, you need to dungeonize it, but since it has a Catacomb 17 requirement, you can't use this weapon for long. Therefore, the next weapon is Adaptive Blade. This weapon only requires floor 2 completion, and pretty much will help you survive all of the early floors. Plus, you get 100 defense while holding, which is even better. Once you get the floor 5 completion, you can upgrade to the Livid Dagger. You probably know this, but this weapon gives you a lot of damage, strength, crit damage, crit chance, and most importantly, attack speed. Just overall really good for DPS, and also gives you 100 crit chance so you won't have to build a setup that includes crit chance. But here's the downside, it is not good for clearing. This is where the Flower Truth comes. This weapon has a floor 6 completion requirement, and has an ability where it shoots a rose that ricochets between mobs, dealing a decent amount of damage. The difference between Livid Dagger and Flower Truth is that the Livid Dagger deals more damage, but the Flower Truth is just better for clearing. So if you're rich, you can just run both. Or you could completely skip the Flower Truth and use the Juju Shortbow, which requires Ender Slayer 5 and Catacomb 15. This weapon is mainly used by Berserks and Archers, as it's very good for clearing and has good DPS. Comparing this with the Flower Truth for clearing, the Juju is better. However, you don't get the benefit of fly stealing mobs, so healing might be an issue. Just keep in mind that the rate of fire is dependent on how much attack speed you have. The next weapon is Shadow Fury, which has a floor 5 completion requirement. This weapon has started a debate back then, because it is better than the Livid Dagger with single hit damage, however, Livid Dagger does more damage per second because of its attack speed. Overall, the difference between them isn't massive, and the Shadow Fury is just very too expensive right now, so it's not worth it. The next weapon is Soul Whip, which has a Fishing 26 and Catacomb 23 requirements. Soul Whip is similar to Flower Truth in terms of clearing. It casts a whip in an arc, dealing damage to everything it hits. It does a surprisingly decent amount of damage, requires no mana, and can lifesteal while constantly spamming the ability. If you look at the Flower Truth, it takes 10% of your max mana each time you use it, which means even if you do have a lot of mana, it just doesn't matter. You'll always run out of mana while clearing. At least that's been my experience with the Flower Truth. If you are playing Floor 7, using a Soul Whip is really helpful for taking aggro and lifestealing. The next weapon is Axe of the Shredded, which has a Zombie Slayer 8 and Catacomb 25 requirement. This weapon has an ability that throws the axe damaging all mobs in its path. First of all, damage wise, it's really good against zombies because it deals 250% more damage to them, but it's mostly used for certain situations only. For example, some rooms, clearing with this might be slower than the flower truth because mobs are not standing in a straight line. But for the floor 6 boss room, this is where it shines, and you can pretty much run around spamming the ability, and since each time the axe hits an enemy counts as melee damage, you can lifesteal from that. The next weapon is Giant Sword, which has a floor 6 completion requirement. This weapon deals a lot of damage, but I personally just don't recommend it, as it costs a lot of money. If you want to use this, combo it with the one for all enchant to deal good single hit damage. Moving on to the good stuff, Astraea, which has a floor 7 completion. This weapon is probably the best and most used tank weapon because of its amazing damage and increases your defense. Although it is very 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 expensive and since you are a tank, you don't have enough mana to use the wither impact to clear the whole room. Therefore, a secondary weapon possibly would be the Terminator or the Juju Shortbow, or you can use the mage setup to clear in. A secondary option to the Estrella is the Scylla, 
This is a different variant of the Necron Blade, but doesn't give you defense. Instead, it is used for the Wither Shield it gives when comboed with the Suspicious Reforge. I wouldn't recommend using this if you're trying to go all out for tanking, since the extra defense Astraea gives is more helpful. The final weapon is Terminator, which has an Enderman Slayer 7 and Caracom 27 requirement. If you thought Juju was good, this is the best weapon for dungeons right now, especially in Master Mode which we will be talking about in a future video. It's amazing for clearing and does an insane amount of damage, although it does cost an insane amount of money like the Estrella, so uh, good luck. And those are all of the weapons. Hopefully you are able to find the right weapon for you. Now for the reforges. If you're using the Estrella or Scylla, use the Suspicious Reforge. And if you're using any of the melee weapons like the Livid Dagger, use Fabled. Withered also works, but Fabled is better. If the health and defense isn't enough for you and you want even more, use Bulky. Next up, we have the helpful items. These are items that will make your dungeon runs easier. The first item is Ice Spray. This one is expensive, but it's really helpful for killing fast mobs like Shadow Assassin because it has an ability where it freezes mobs for 5 seconds, giving you time to do as much damage as possible. Comboing this with the Short Bow, you can become unstoppable. The next item is Florid or Ornate Zombie Sword. The Florid Zombie Sword is the upgraded version of Ornate and has a good healing ability where it heals you for 168 HP plus 5% of your total health. Third item is Gloomlock Grim War. This item has an ability where it heals you for 40% with overflow mana. Personally, this item is extremely overpowered for tank and makes surviving so easy, so make sure to invest in this. Just remember that it consumes a lot of soul flow over time and lowers your damage after you use it. The fourth item is Plasma Flux, Overflux, or Mana Flux. The Plasma Flux is the upgraded version of the Overflux, and they all give you more strength and increase your region. The fifth item is Last Breath. This can be used as a weapon, but, but it is used for the ability where it reduces the defense of your target by 10% of their max defense on hit, stacking up to 5 times. The sixth item is Gyro Wand. This item has two abilities. The left click ability pulls all mobs in the center, and the right click ability applies the aligned effect to 4 nearby players and yourself for 6 seconds. What Align does is that it splits incoming damage evenly between all aligned players. Overall, this item is very helpful for killing mini bosses and clearing out rooms. The seventh item is Wither Cloak Sword. This weapon is mostly used for its ability where it spawns a veil around you, giving you immunity from all damage. This is probably one of the most underrated ability in the game. It's extremely helpful for blocking damage that you know is about to come. In addition, it gives you 250 defense when holding it, so if you don't have an Astraea, you can hold this for extra effective HP. The 8th item is Jingle Bell. This item is used to take aggro of all mobs in a 10 blocks radius, which is helpful in floor 7 boss room. The last two helpful items are Bones of Mask and Spirit Mask. These two items are helpful by giving you a second life, but what's amazing about both of them is that you can combo them to almost never die. What you do is you start off by using the Spirit Mask, then when you die, you switch to the Bones of Mask, then once 30 second cooldown is over, you can go back to the Spirit Mask. This is basically a cheat code to be immortal, so... It's really good. And that is everything. If you have any questions, be sure to join my Discord and ask in there. There are a lot of people that will help you out, including myself. If I got anything wrong and you want to add more to what I mentioned, leave it down in the comment section below. Anyways, this video took me way too long to make, so I would appreciate it if you hit that like button. And if you want to see more Skyblock videos, hit that subscribe button. I'll be working on the other class guides next, so you don't want to miss that. Okay, bye!